Okay, so back at Valley Forge, the old coot here coming at you with another exciting video. So this is my hammock set up without the tarp. Basically, I laid down the hardware, and then I got two tires <laughs> to do anything else. I'm probably going to take a nap here pretty soon. I still have to stake out the sides. This is a Warbonnet uh, War Blackbird XLC, the double version, right? So it's got two layers of material. And then underneath it is the UGQ Zero Degree Undercolt. We're only expecting temperatures in the 50s tonight, so... What I did was I set the undercoat like a little loose to let more air come in there and kind of try to find the right balance between warm and cold and hot and all the good stuff. We'll see how it goes tonight. And then what I've got is a, well, I've got a new system. Uh, I'm going to have to show you how to do this in a video later. But what I did was I did a nice little, uh, I don't even know what the heck this knot is called, but basically you make a loop you go under and through, then you go under and through, and then you basically go over and through. And it basically creates like a, a knot right there that you can tie off. This is the tie off point. Then these are going to be the tie off points, right? Prusik loop tie off points for my tarp, which is going to go on next. That is a warp on a super fly that I have that's going to go on there. And then on this side, I got some dirty laundry, basically the shirt that I used to hike in here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is up here i've got uh just tied like a simple like almost like a sort of like a trucker's loop i don't even know what the what these knots are called but basically just something so i can hang uh my shirt and you get the idea coot coot you get the idea and then here what i've got is a, a trucker's right hitch kind of a thing going on i loop back around and through and then the trick to this trucker's loop is to make an alpine butterfly and i'll show everybody how to do that maybe in another video uh, i have to get some spare, spare paracord and all that and then the way i tied my hammock straps right so here are the uh here are the hammock straps let me get okay so starting from the hammock so the hammock came with these i believe these are dutchware is that what they are uh these buckles are originally what held the hammock straps i was noticing that the buckles were kind of digging into the dyneema cord over here or whatever this is the super heavy duty uh loop that basically connect to so what i did is i just got a carabiner i just got a couple carabiners that'll hold you know whatever it is 24 kilonewtons or something ridiculous right there so you can see 24 kilonewtons and basically my hammock strap loops through that and then comes back into some descending rings that are that are going through basically some webbing that went around the tree. This tree is massive. It's like, it's gotta be like eight to 10 feet uh, in circumference all the way around. That's what she said. It's probably at, le at least three and a half to four feet in diameter. So what I did was on the back, I did a little water knot so I could still double the webbing. You know, it's probably overkill, over-engineered, but I like to just make sure that it set it and forget it and never have to worry about it ever again. So, I've got a nice water knot going on here. I'll have to show everybody how to do that someday. Not today. And then here what I've got is I've got some paracord that I basically created another knot right here, almost like an alpine butterfly, but different, that's holding up my water bag. And this is also uh, just the descending rings, like I had some leftovers. So I've got a S beaner going into my MSR dromedary. This is my clean filtered water. And then this descending ring what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to use this to hang up my believe it or not terminator xl <laughs> from everly stock what a beast of a backpack i know you've seen other videos that i posted with this backpack in here but focusing back again on the hammock pretty nice setup i've done other videos on my hammocks before why not do another one <laughs> here we go so I kind of have it set to like, this is the foot end. I, and it's important to get these baffles. Whenever you do get like a, a UGQ, is that what it's called? Yeah, UGQ underquilt. Where's my labeling right here? Here's my labeling. So Ultima Down 850, UGQ Outdoors, great company. Make sure that you get the baffling here, right? So it's not just this that ends. It, it's There's a baffle that's sewn in here that kind of like cushions the gap and then you can open or close that however you need to right so that's the extra baffling that's in there also tip or trick i noticed was thank god i got green 
because dark colors, like especially black, like if you get black, the bees love the black color. And I think what it is, is somebody told me this, a guy I know that who's in the same industry I am, who's a, who's a bee wrangler, beekeeper, basically said that the color black, bees are attracted to that because it reminds them of black bears and bears in general that are trying to steal the honey. So that's why they attack. So if you ever find yourself outdoors, see I'm wearing like a light blue shirt. If you ever find out yourselves outdoors, especially during daylight hours, try to wear lighter colors to begin with. But if you wear the lighter colors, you'll calm the bees and they won't necessarily attack you. Not to say they won't, but less likelihood. And then on this side, basically the same thing. I've got my little line here because I know that it's going to be probably foggy tomorrow morning when we wake up or cloudy or overcast. Uh, Cause like I said, we're expecting rain tomorrow afternoon. I did my little lines here to catch any dew or water drip lines. Is that what they're called? Sorry about the technical terminology. But basically I'm trying, I'll set this later, but anyways, basically you just want something so that the water as it beads down, like if it does bead down, can just fall off of these strings, right? Once I get it set up correctly. But anyways, the old coot and uh, basically, oh, so here I did a different process. Here I couldn't get, I couldn't get one tree strap to go all the way around the tree. And we're talking about, I need like a 14 foot tree strap to go around this thing twice. So what I did was I, I connected two separate webbings together with butterfly or with, uh, yeah, with water knots. And then basically used a carabiner and then the descending rings were on the carabiner. And then basically my, my hammock strap, like the strap that actually goes to the hammock connected to the descending rings here. Whereas on that one, the descending rings were connected to the webbing. So here you have webbing, carabiner, descending rings. So it's kind of cool. I get to show you two, two different systems at once. And then what I do is, is I put my water knots in the back. So here they are. If you all want to take a look, basically you create a figure eight with one and then you follow through the reverse direction with the other web. And basically I, I double up because I just want the extra peace of mind. Like I said, probably over-engineered. And a lot of people are going to say, why didn't you just take the, the hammock strap and do a single strap around the... Because I'm a big guy, <laughs> heavy, let's say overweight. And I just want the peace of mind and knowing that I have two straps holding me up instead of just one also less bouncy this way. So you get a more, you get a more secure, let's say a secure connection. Whereas when I was doing the single strap, what was happening was, was it would stretch and stretch and stretch. And then by the end of, you know, the camping experience, my butt was almost touching the ground. This way I know I'm about two and a half feet off the ground. It's going to stay like that. It's probably not going to sag at all. Like if it does sag, but uh, anyways, you get the idea. So with that being said, that's my hammock setup from up here at Valley Forge. And I will catch you all in the next exciting video. Hit that description section down there below for some links to the descending rings, to the carabiners, to the paracord that I use, to the tent stakes I use to stake down my tarp, to the tarp, the hammock, the undercoat, all that stuff. I'll try to put as many links as I can down there below in the description. So make sure to check that out, and I will catch you on the next exciting video.